Hi, I'm Richard from Plant Photonics and welcome to this, the fifth in our series of LED grow light technology videos. Today we're going to be looking at white LED grow lights, also known as full spectrum grow lights. Rather than looking at any particular light, we're going to take a look at the LEDs, the specifications, and take a look at what each specification actually means and what effect it has on the suitability of those LEDs for grow light. This information is useful both if you want to make your own grow light a DIY version or if you're buying one what sort of information to look for and possibly ask questions of the manufacturer or seller. We're going to look at the following specifications. First, color temperature. Second of all, lumens. Thirdly, something called color rendering index. And lastly, we're going to look at the actual output spectrum of the LEDs and we're going to see how each of these affects their suitability for use in grow lights. So first of all, color temperature. This is a typical LED specification sheet. This one is actually from the Cree CXB 3590 series of LEDs. Now the first specification we're going to look at is this one over here. This is your color temperature, or this one is corrected color temperature, but it's the same thing. And this describes basically the warmth or coldness of the light. Now, when you describe it that way as a warm or cold light, then temperature kind of makes sense. But most people don't actually realize what this exactly refers to. This here, 4000 K. 4000 K stands for 4000 degrees Kelvin. Now, Kelvin is actually a temperature measurement system. And it's very similar to Celsius. Now here's an example of a comparison between Kelvin, centigrade, and Fahrenheit. Now one degree Kelvin, this is the Kelvin scale, is exactly the same as one degree centigrade. The big difference between them is whereas centigrade takes zero as the freezing point of water, Kelvin takes zero as absolute zero. This is the coldest it's possible to get. And it's actually minus 273 degrees Celsius. Now, again, it's, it's kind of puzzling to a lot of people how you get from an actual physical temperature to light. Well, a good example is this. This is a hot bar of steel. And as you can see, it's glowing. It's giving off light. And if we have a look look at another example here. This is one that's hot, very hot at one end and cooler at the other end. And as you can see, as the temperature increases, it goes from a very dull red up to a pretty much cherry red, tomato red, orange, yellow, and eventually to white. And that's because any object as it heats up starts beginning, beginning to emit light. So what this chart is actually referring to, this is actually known as black body radiation. And it's a non-reflective body. All the light coming from it is sourced from the material itself. And what it's, this is actually saying is that this is the light you would get if you heated a black body up to 4,000 degrees Kelvin. Now, let's come in a variety of different temperatures. You can get down to about uh, 2,500, possibly, all the way up to 10,000 degrees Kelvin. Now, for growing plants, you really want to look at something around 4,000 degrees Kelvin. And if you get too far down, you can run into problems that have nothing to do really with the light itself but the fact that there's an awful lot of phosphor over the underlying lead and it can cause heat buildup problems. Now, having tested pretty much every temperature within reason, I and lots of other growers, you can take a look on YouTube or do a search on it, have chosen 4,000 degrees as probably about the best compromised temperature. Some people do recommend higher temperatures, but they're basing it on this. This is the color temperature of various different light sources, everything from candlelight, on up. Now they'll look at this and they'll say, okay, noon daylight direct sun, that's got to be the ideal temperature, which is around 5,500 to 6,500 degrees Kelvin. Unfortunately, LEDs are not actually black bodies and they're just a simulation of it. And later on, I'll show you why 
going to this extreme is not a good idea. Okay, the next specification we're going to look at is lumens. Now this is one of my pet hatreds when it comes to LED grow lights. Lumens is not what you think it is, and it's completely irrelevant to grow lighting. It also has a bad effect in that it tends to make people choose exactly the wrong LEDs instead of the right ones. So let's take a look at exactly what it really means and why it's irrelevant to grow lights. Right, this is an enlargement of a section of the data sheet we looked at earlier. This is the 4000 degree Kelvin section. Now, let's take a look at the luminous flux of some of the LEDs. Now here we've got one that puts out 13,000 lumens, one that puts out 12,000 lumens, and one that puts out 10,000 lumens. Now, which of those do you think is actually putting out the most light? Notice I didn't say which is the brightest, I said which is putting out the most light. Well, the, the answer is they're all putting out the same amount of light. And which one of those do you think would be best for growing plants with? Most people, if I hadn't just said that, would have picked this one again. No, it's actually this one, 10,000 lumens. Now, to understand how this can be possible, you have to understand exactly what lumens are. Lumens are not a measurement of how bright something actually is. That's the sticking point. It's a measure of how bright something appears to the human eye. And the human eye does not respond the same way to each wavelength of light. In fact, it responds like this. This is called the luminosity function, and it shows how bright things appear to the eye at different wavelengths. Now, the peak is right up here. It's actually at 555 nanometers, which is right in the middle of the green spectrum. The problem is, is that human eye and plants are not the same. Now, down here, when we get into the blue, and over here, when we're into the red, in the far red sections, you can see that the human eye response is extremely low. It's actually about 1% the, the amount that it is here in the green section. Okay, now this, if you've watched the earlier videos, you'll recognize as the photosynthetic action curve. And this shows the amount of photosynthesis at each wavelength. Now here, you can see that in this area up here in the blue and in the red, where the eye response was very low, the plant's response is very high. In fact, if we superimpose the two images together, you get this, and you can see that what appears extremely bright to the human eye appears basically pretty dim to a plant. And that is a big problem when you're basing your judgment on lumens. The more energy a light bulb has or a LED has, in this area, the brighter it appears and the higher the lumens output. Unfortunately, that's completely useless for plants. To give you an idea of exactly how misleading lumens can be when it comes to grow lights, if you took a 100 watt red-blue LED grow light, it would probably give you a lumens rating similar to approximately a 10 watt white LED light bulb. That's because all of its energy is out here in the red, oh, sorry, in the blue, and the red region, whereas the white light bulb has got most of its output in here. So from that, it's pretty obvious that the actual lumens rating of a light is going to depend very much on exactly where, what part of the spectrum it's putting its light out at. If it's concentrated in here, it'll have a pretty high rating. If it's putting it out more in these areas, it's going to have a much lower rating. And that is why these LEDs actually put out the same amount of light, but the spectrum is different. This has got more energy going into the blue and red sections and slightly less in the center. And that takes us very neatly into our next section, which is on this, CRI, the Color Rendering Index. So what's Color Rendering Index? If you look here, you'll see that you've got three different values, 70, 80, and 90. Well, color rendering index is a measure of how accurate colors appear under a particular light. Now, I'll give you an example here. Here's a bunch of flowers under four different levels of CRI. 
CRI 100, by the way, is equivalent to normal sunlight. That's sort of the gold standard. It contains all the colors of the spectrum at pretty much the same level. Now, as you can see, when you go from 40 to 60 to 80 to 100, the colors become more vivid and natural, and it's especially noticeable with colors such as red and purple, which, of course, is a combination of red and blue. There isn't any actual blue in this example, unfortunately. So, as we see by reflected light, we can't really see shades and colors which are not actually contained in the light illuminating what we're looking at. If you stick this under a green light, you'd have virtually no visible red or purple or anything, and you'd really struggle to, to work out what the colors are. In fact, it would be pretty much impossible. And of course, the higher the CRI, the closer you get to natural sunlight, which of course plants do really like. So next, let's take a look at the spectrum of LEDs in 70, 80, and 90 CRI. Starting off here, you've got, this is a 70 CRI, you've got warm white, cool white, and there's your eye response. Now, if you're growing, you want to use the warm white because they've got a lot more output in red. Now, the important thing to look at here is take a look at the amount of red around 630 and 660 nanometers. So you're looking about here. Uh, the peak on here is at 600 nanometers. At 630, which is your standard red lead, it's not too bad. It's still at about uh, 75% or something. But when you get down to 660 nanometers, you're down to about 50% output. So that's not really very good. So let's take a look at the 80 CRI. Now here, again, the warm white, again, peaks at about 600 nanometers. However, at 630, you've still got quite a lot of output. At 660, it has dropped off quite a bit and you're still at about 55%, so that's not particularly brilliant. The uh, cool white, as you can see, has a lot of blue and very little red out here. So that's why you want to always go with warm white. And finally, we go to this one. This is a CRI 95, and this is actually the lead that we use in our white grow lights, our full spectrum grow lights of plant photonics. Now, the big key here, big difference is, here your peak is actually occurring at 630 nanometers. So it is actually peaking at the same wavelength as a red lead. And down here at 660 nanometers, which is actually about here, you can see it's still putting out about 90% of the peak output. Now that is pretty much ideal. And as an added bonus, it continues all the way out down to here. And you're still getting a reasonable amount out around 730 nanometers. So that is a pretty much ideal lead for growing. Now, admittedly, the blue output is fairly low. However, having tried these LEDs and other ones with similar spectrums and added in extra blue LEDs in order to uh, boost the blue output up, there was actually no noticeable difference. I ran several tests using a large number of plants, and in each case, the, there was no discernible difference. So it doesn't seem to make any difference the amount of blue that's in here is sufficient. Right, so now we've gone through all the specifications on that sheet. And hopefully you've got a clearer picture now of what they all mean. So basically the only one that's not important is lumens, and it really isn't important. You can't even use it to compare, for example, LEDs from different manufacturers, even if they have the same color rendering index and everything else, because just a slight shift in the spectrum uh, the way they distribute the energy coming from the lead will make a big difference in the lumens rating. Now, in all honesty, things like color temperature aren't that critical. You can use anything from 3000 to 4500, uh, even 2500 to 4500, and you're not going to get a huge difference. However, always look, find out what LEDs you're getting if you're buying uh, pre-made light, or if you're making your own light, Always make sure you take a look at the data sheet and take a look where the energy is on the spectrum. 
the best thing to look for is see where the peak of the red is. It should be at 630 rather than 600 nanometers. And you usually only find those with uh, CRI 90 or above. If you have to go to 80, it's not too great of a loss. But if you're buying the LEDs and buying the light, you may as well get the best you can for your money. There shouldn't be very much of a difference in price. Higher CRI LEDs are more expensive, but it's a fairly small amount and you're looking at keeping the light if you get a decent quality light or LEDs they should last you literally 10-20 years so it's, it's not a big deal so I hope you've learned something from this and I hope you've enjoyed the video as usual please uh, comment subscribe like all that stuff I really really would like some feedback from you guys and the next one is going to be on power supplies we're going to be looking at constant current constant voltage power supplies and we'll be getting into some cobweb technology as well. We'll be talking about exactly how cobwebs work and why you treat them slightly differently than you do normal LEDs. So that's especially useful for anyone doing any DIY LEDs, LED lights. So look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much and happy growing.